One Zambia, One Nation, to present the main news at 19 hours on ZNBC TV. I'm Patricia Ellis. Our sign language interpreter is Joel Mondoka. A look at the top stories in the news. President Edgar Lungu says government is in the process of making the National Health Insurance Scheme operational. The Energy Regulation Board has revised upwards fuel pump prices for petroleum products effective midnight. Secretary to the Cabinet Simon Miti has called on the Accountant General to monitor heads of accounting units compliance to austerity measures. And government says the Southern Africa Intermunicipal Games are important as they promote unity among municipalities in the region. Thank you so much for joining us in our news in detail. President Edgar Lungu says government is in the process of making the National Health Insurance Scheme operational. President Lungu says the scheme is aimed at enabling Zambians to have equal access to health care without suffering financial costs. He said this in New York during the United Nations General Assembly high-level meeting on universal health coverage. Details in this report. The United Nations General Assembly has commenced official business for heads of state and government at its headquarters in New York. The high-level engagement started with a summit on universal health coverage. President Edgar Lungu was part of other world leaders attending the summit and shared Zambia's status in the rolling out of universal health services to all Zambians. We have made significant headways in ensuring adequate availability of stocks for essential medicines and medical supplies. We have also embraced the health in all policy strategy to strengthen intersectoral interventions for determinants of health outside the health sector. We remain resolute to addressing potential public health threats from within and outside our borders. We are committed to working with all stakeholders in strengthening resilience to public health emergencies. Equally, we are committed to addressing the growing problem of antimicrobial resistance, outbreaks of emerging and re-emerging infection diseases, infectious diseases, and the silent scourge of non-communicable diseases. I wish to conclude with an urgent appeal for a common global resolve to respond rapidly and sincerely to all threats to peace, which is a prerequisite to sound public health. As an example, the underlying trigger to the current Ebola outbreak is far from being a health issue, but Ebola threatens all of us. We clearly need to do more in all aspects of universal health coverage. Other foreign heads of state and government also presented their country positions on health matters. Health Minister Dr. Chitari Shalufia and other senior government officials were part of President Lungu's delegation to the UN General Assembly in New York. We will start reporting from the UN headquarters in New York, USA. The Energy Regulation Board, ERB, has revised upwards fuel pump prices for petroleum products effective midnight. The price of petrol has increased from 15 kwacha 20 ngwe to 15 kwacha 90 ngwe, while diesel has been adjusted from 13 kwacha 43 ngwe to 14 kwacha 23 ngwe. Kerosene has increased from 11 kwacha 34 ngwe to 13 kwacha and gas from 15 kwacha 72 ngwe to 16 kwacha 52 ngwe. ERB board chairperson Raymond Mpundu says the upward adjustment is because of the depreciation of the kwacha while international oil prices continued on an upward trend. Mr Mpundu says the last review of pump prices of fuel which resulted in changes at the pump was a price reduction on, 20, on February 28, 2019. He says prices were subsequently reviewed 
reviewed on April 15th and June 14th, 2019, but fuel prices were not adjusted as the volatility in the economic fundamentals made it inappropriate to effect an adjustment. Mr. Mpundu said international oil prices and the exchange rate have not been favorable from the last fuel price adjustment in February 2019 up to September 2019. The ERB chairperson told ZNBC News in a statement that the two factors have had the combined effect of increasing the domestic wholesale and pump prices beyond the 2.5% trigger band. Secretary to the Cabinet Simon Meaty has called on the Accountant General to monitor heads of accounting units' compliance to austerity measures. Dr. Meaty says the expectation of government is that accountants will provide accurate accounting information to facilitate decision-making that will result in compliance to austerity measures. He said this in a speech read on his behalf by Deputy Secretary to the Cabinet, Christopher Mvunga. This was during a workshop for directors of finance being held under the theme Commitment to Effective Management of Public Resources to Achieve Results by Doing More with Less. And Accountant General Dick Sichembe has assured Zambians that accountants will ensure they carry out their mandate with the required diligence. Expected to provide sound advice to controlling officers on implementation of austerity measures. In addition, the cabinet expects accountants to play an advisory role in the allocation of public resources during the budgeting process to ensure attainment of more institutional performance outputs with optimal allocation of resources. The office has observed that there is a growing perception of poor payroll management. As you may be aware, PEs and debt service presently account for 90% of our expenditure allocation. It is now hypercritical to ensure, to ensure accuracy of the payroll. Accountants play a critical role in monitoring payroll trends in order to eliminate errors. We know that uh, it is our obligation, our responsibility, and our duty to safeguard the resources of this country. And the people of Zambia have entrusted us with um, this authority to ensure that we manage the resources effectively to develop the country. We count it as a privilege, sir, from among other Zambians that we could be given this responsibility to look after the In another development, the Secretary to the Cabinet has proposed that Article 189 on the payment of pension benefits promptly and regularly in the Constitution of Zambia Amendment Bill No. 10 of 2019 should be removed completely. Speaking before the Parliamentary Select Committee on Constitution Amendment Bill No. 10 of 2019, Dr. Meaty said there is urgent need to reform the public pension schemes to make them sustainable. He said the two pension schemes, the Public Service Pension Fund, PSPF, and Local Authorities Panuation Fund, LASIF, have design challenges. Dr. Miti explained that the pension schemes are designed to pay out more than the contributions made by the employee and the employer. He stated that the government has already embarked on a comprehensive reform process of the public pension schemes to make them sustainable. And Dr. Miti has disclosed that currently PSPF and LASIF have huge deficits estimated at 46.2 billion kwacha and 4 billion kwacha respectively. Dr. Miti was responding to Luena, Member of Parliament, Geoffrey Lungwangwa, who wanted to know if government is engaging the unions who have said Article 189 should be maintained. The Saka Central Member of Parliament, Margaret Monakatwe, also wanted to know how long the new pension reforms will take. You watching the main news at 19. Just now we go for a commercial break, but do stay tuned as we have more news coming up right after that. We'll continue with the main news. Deregistered National Democratic Congress NDC leader Chishimba Kambwili has reiterated that he did not issue racial remarks against an Indian national. This was after he took fresh plea in the Lusaka Magistrate Court in a matter where he is facing the charge of expressing or showing hatred 
ridicule or contempt for persons because of race contrary to the laws of Zambia. Mr. Kamwili appeared before Lusaka Magistrate Jennifer Walia. This, the case was earlier allocated to Lusaka Resident Magistrate Sylvia Munyinya, who has proceeded on leave. Trial in the matter commences on November 11, 2019. On February 19th this year, Mr. Kamwili allegedly expressed racial remarks on Rajesh Kumar Verma, an Indian national. The Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA, has seized a truckload of Konyagi alcohol, which was deliberately misclassified as building materials with intent to defraud the state over, of over 700,000 kwacha. ZRA Corporate Communications Manager Topsy Sikalinda has disclosed to ZNBC News in Osaka that the truck was forced to pass through a scanner after customs officers suspected something wrong with the paperwork. Mr. Sikalinda said it was then discovered that the declared building materials were in fact alcohol after the containerized truck passed through the scanner. They had declared these items as uh, hardware, it meant that they were going to pay about 43,000 kwacha, whereas if they had declared it as alcohol, they were required to pay over 700,000 uh, kwacha in terms of taxes. So this was done deliberately, purely to defraud the state of the much needed revenue. But we are equal to the task as uh, an authority, and we will ensure that such maneuvers will not be tolerated. In another development at uh, Kapiri Enforcement Center, we noted that uh, there was a truck that had been declared that it was ca carrying uh, glass bottles. But when we checked, we actually discovered it was carrying ethanol, which was worth over 3 million kwacha in terms of taxes. So these trucks, uh, these trucks have been intercepted, all the four of them, and we will ensure that uh, the correct taxes are paid. The Copper Belt Christian Consultative Forum, CCCF, has rejected the introduction of Zambia as a multi-religious state in the 2016 Amendment Constitution. CCCF President Radi Lewila has proposed that Zambia should maintain its status as a Christian nation like it was founded. Dr. Lewila was speaking on behalf of 52 clergy who appeared before the Parliamentary Select Committee scrutinizing constitution amendment bill number 10 of 2019 he said the christian nation declaration should be maintained because the nation has to take a clear position as christian nation we would never compromise our identity nor be apologetic of who we truly are as a nation but that we would set laws according to with god's word from the book of psalm 33 verse 12 which helps to create a strong and spiritual foundation, shaped character, increase faith as well as examine crucial state policy uh, issues through the timeless lenses of God's pure word. And that is our position. Since the time in memorial, it is a well-known fact that the people of Zambia have been adherent to the Christian faith. It is therefore our submission that we should not depart from our Christian heritage. In the spirit just now we go for another commercial break and coming up after that we have the water resources news segment stay tuned and now the rest of the news tourism and arts minister ronald chitotela has directed the national heritage and conservation commission to work with the luapla provincial administration to open the kilwa caves on lake mueru penlop sikazwe reports It is a marvel to watch from above. This is Kilwa Island, a sleeping tourist giant that the Ministry of Tourism will not allow to lie low anymore. Tourism and Arts Minister Ronald Chitotela and the Minister and the Office of the Vice President Oli Papiri got excited to watch the side map of it, kissed by the famous Lake Mueru at its counters. But it is when the plane landed that the minister interacted with its inhabitants and chief in Shimba that the story of its poorly marketed caves was pushed to the table. The chief spokesperson outlined this. We like other people to invest in this industry. It might be of interest to know that we have the caves that we call the member caves here, that are the largest natural caves 
and uh, they've got the natural the the largest tunnel in the country which if explored would positively contribute to the development of our country and the chiefdom in particular the Minister of Tourism and Arts has directed the National Heritage Commission to work with the provincial office to come up with a strategy that will awaken the hibernating giant. I have directed the, the National Heritage Commission working together with the provincial administration to begin working on opening up those caves so that we can begin exposing them and attracting the foreign investments. Other people will not eat potential. We must be able to expose this potential into reality. Zambians must begin appreciating the natural resource that we have. The minister also got the chance to capture the ever-flowing Lumangwe Falls with its furious waters thundering below, another one among his list of tourist attractions that will need a boost. Penlop Sikazwe, ZNBC News. Government has released allowances for traditional leaders for the month of August 2019. Chiefs and Traditional Affairs Minister Lawrence Sichalwe disclosed this to ZNBC News in Osaka today. Received funding as at uh, Friday, so we are paying the August. The other arrears, they have since been approved in the supplementary budget. So that we are waiting to be funded through the supplementary budget. Then we will clear the arrears. Um, in, uh, in some chiefdoms, there are succession morangos where chiefs are not uh, on the payroll meaning the retainers also will be affected. That needs uh, a proper reconciliation. But uh, what we are paying are those chiefs that are, do not have any encumbrances. President Edgar Lungu, during a meeting with 21 chiefs from Southern Province last week, directed the Ministry of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs to ensure subsidies owed to chiefs are paid. PF National Youth Chairperson Kelvin Sampa has challenged youths that benefit from empowerment programs to create job opportunities for young people. Speaking when he addressed youths at Kaputa Boarding School in Kaputa District, Mr. Sampa said government has several youth empowerment plans ready to empower youths throughout the country. Details in this report. They could not wait for his arrival. The youths of Kaputa district in northern province have expressed concern saying they feel left out in development. That is why National Youth Chairman Kelvin Sampa has visited the area. Mr. Sampa, who is also Kasama Central Member of Parliament, has highlighted government's programs for the youths throughout the country. <laughs> The youths gathered were also accorded time to interact with their leader. Meanwhile, some youths are excited they cannot wait for the words of Mr. Sampa to come to reality. Layering of chickens, he also talked about a lot of thing, uh, things that I cannot even mention, of which if we use your, we are given to be monitoring or to be, uh, to be using all those uh, like uh, sources of funds, mm, it will be helping us uh, in one way or another instead of maybe to be doing these other negative things. Kaputa member of parliament, Mexa Singonga, has urged youths to form clubs and claim the empowerment made available for them. Ephraim Chiluba, ZNBC News, Kaputa, Northern Province. 
Former ZNBC radio and television producer Mwila Kapambwe has died. Family representative Alec Kawe says Mr. Kapambwe, who died on Saturday, will be put to rest tomorrow. Mr. Kawe disclosed Mr. Kapambwe's death to ZNBC News in Lusaka today. He said the funeral is being held in Chelston. Mr. Kapambwe is survived by six children and a wife. And ZNBC Human Resources Development Officer Shalala Simushi, who died on Friday, will be put to rest at Memorial Park tomorrow. ZNBC Corporate Affairs Manager Yvette Chanda says Mr. Simushi, who joined the corporation in 1989, provided invaluable contributions, especially in human in human resource department. Mr. Simushi, 56, died at university, the University Teaching Hospital in Osaka around 20 hours on Friday. He is survived by a wife, five children, and a grandchild. In foreign news, at least seven children have died after a classroom collapsed at a primary school in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. The wooden structure at Precious Talent Top School collapsed just minutes after the start of the school day today. Dozens of people were injured and have been taken to hospital in the city. The school's director, Moses Ndirangu, blamed the collapse on the construction of a nearby sewer, which he said may have weakened the foundation of the building. The collapse happened shortly before 07 hours local time and dozens of children were rushed away from the scene. For other international stories, we join Deutsche Welle TV. The British tour operator Thomas Cook has collapsed after failing to secure a last minute rescue deal. More than half a million holiday makers are travelling with the company. The UK Aviation Authority has launched a program of flights to get Thomas Cook customers home. Israel's president has held consultations to form the next government after there was no clear winner in Tuesday's elections. An alliance of Israeli Arab political parties is backing former military chief Benny Gantz as the next prime minister. Its priority is to oust Benjamin Netanyahu from power. A funeral has been held for an eight-year-old girl killed in a shanty town in Brazil. She was hit by a stray bullet, allegedly fired by police in Rio de Janeiro. The burial followed a weekend of protests over police violence. In sports news, President Edgar Lungu says the Southern in Africa inter-municipal games are important because they promote unity among municipalities in the region. President Lungu says the 2019 Saimsa Games, which are being held in Zambia, should be used as a platform to promote regional integration and improve the status of civic leaders in the SADC region. He said this in a speech read on his behalf by Sports Minister Emmanuel Mlenga during the opening ceremony of the Saimsa Games in Osaka. And local government minister Charles Banda said local authority workers must take the lead in active sports as a way of boosting their performance at work. Meanwhile, Lusaka Province Minister Bowman Lusambo urged the participants to take interest sampling the tourism and hospitality industries in, Z in Lusaka. And Southern Africa Intermunicipal Sports Association, SAIMSA President Sam Rametze, said the Games are key in building strong relationships between council workers in the region. Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, South Africa and hosts Zambia are taking part in the 2019 SAIMSA Games. Meanwhile, a senior committee clerk from Chilabombo City Council has died during a netball game at the ongoing Southern Africa Intermunicipal Sports Association Games in Osaka. Zambia Local Authority Sports Association Zalasa President Christopher Shakafuso has confirmed the death of Malekano Katete to ZNBC News in Osaka. Mr. Shakafuso said Ms. Katete complained that she was not feeling well after playing netball and after medical checkups, it was discovered that her blood pressure was high. She, however, died in an ambulance as she was being rushed to UTH. On that sad note, we end the news, but let's recap on the top stories. President Edgar Lungu says government is in the process of making the National Health Insurance Scheme operational. The Energy Regulation Board has increased fuel pump prices effective midnight.
that ends the main news thank you so much for watching let's remember to love be loyal and devoted to our country and patricia ellis our sign language interpreter has been joel mondaka bye-bye for now <coughs>